In this video, I'm going to go over the six basic types of flanges for ASME B16.5. The weld neck, threaded, slip-on, lap joint, socket weld, and blind flange. All six flanges before me are for one inch nominal pipe size, class 150 for B16.5, and raised face, or in short, one inch, 150 pound RF, with the exception of the lap joint, which will be explained later. The weld neck flange is the most commonly requested flange. It features a neck extension with a tapered hub, a 37 and a half degree bevel, and a 16th inch landing at the point of weld. This will butt directly onto another pipe with a similar bevel, where it'll be welded together with a 75 degree weld. Because it butts directly onto pipe, and is going to match the OD and the ID of the pipe, you'll need to tell us the schedule you're using. You could also give us the ID or the inner diameter, which is another word for bore, or you can tell us the wall thickness. Once you've given us any of those, we'll be able to make your flange meet the pipe exactly. The threaded flange or companion flange features an NPT. In this case, it's a one inch flange, so it has a one inch female national pipe thread center, which is used to make to male threaded pipe. It's a tapered thread, so when the pipe is fully threaded down, it will bottom out, like so. Threaded flanges are commonly used in reducing connections as well. The slip-on flange is a simple and cost-effective alternative to the weld neck flange. It has a straight-through ID, and as the name implies, slips onto pipe. The pipe is then welded along the OD at the top of the hub. This separates the heat affected zone from the rest of the flange. In larger sizes and higher pressure classes, you'll see more of a hub. Other applications might call for the pipe to be pulled back 3 16 of an inch and a 90 degree fillet weld being performed on the ID of the flange. It is possible to have both welds performed if the application calls for it. The lap joint flange is similar to a slip-on, except it is always flat face and has a radius on the ID or inner diameter to accommodate a stub end. The normal application calls for the flange to slide up the pipe for your stub to be butt welded directly onto your pipe and then your flange to slide over the weld onto the stub end. You'll see that the stub end's flare or flange portion extends out and creates the raised face section of the bolted flange connection. The socket weld flange is similar to a slip-on except it has a counter bore step. This is convenient in situations where there is a space limitation. Just like a slip-on, the pipe will go into the flange but then butt up against that counter bore step creating a flush surface along the ID of the pipe and the ID of the flange. So just like weld necks, socket welds will need to be specified with a schedule or a bore or ID or the pipe's wall thickness. You tell us any of those and we'll make sure you get the flange that you need. The blind flange has no ID or threads. It's only used to cap off a line, bolting onto another flange flanged fitting or flanged valve. You'll also notice that it has no hub. Per B16.5, blinds do not require hubs. You can also alter a blind by drilling through to create a reducing slip arm from blind or drill and tap to create a reducing threaded from blind. In applications where you require a hub, which you'll see in another video, we can provide a high hub blind and then alter per your requirements. These six flange types are of course not the only types of flanges available. If you have need for anything else, be it plate flanges, metric flanges, high yield, carbon steel, stainless steel, nickel alloys, or anything else that's round with bolt holes in it, we'd be happy to help. If you have any questions, give us a call or shoot us an email. And that way we can get you the flanges you need when you need them.